So this is the brand new all-in-one Linux distro that is capable to run Android, Ubuntu, Debian, Arc and a lot of other Linux containers as well. So watch the video till the end to find out how to install it on your system. So I'm using the GNOME desktop environment version but uh, you can choose among a variety of other two that you will find out later in the video. All the applications by default are categorized and we can access the settings from the system tools folder. The settings has all the basic options for the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and if you go to the appearance settings we will not see any options for the uh, the dock or the icons but we can access the dark mode and the light mode and this is how it looks in the dark mode and we also have a variety of uh, wallpapers and they also have their complementary dark theme or uh, versions too so it's good to see you can check out all the different uh, wallpapers in the multitasking option we can access the overview or the recent just by hovering our mouse on the top left side or you can access via using your windows start menu key and uh, in the applications list you can see i have a lot of android applications so we will see how to install it later so all the other options are pretty basic and uh, you can see i have the uh, ryzen 2500u processor with the 8 gb of ram this is how the quick toggles look and it kind of reminds me of the android version and you can access the restart logout button and also your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with a single click. We also have the uh, quick toggle for the night light and the dark theme. Also beside the power menu toggle we can see the uh, shortcut for screenshot and this is how the interface looks and you can take screenshot of your entire screen or for just a window. So and but we do not see any option for screen recording. Now we have a dedicated Android apps folder. So how to get it? We need to first install the Android. So in the system tools folder, we will open the blend OS settings and here we can install the different uh, Linux containers. So we have a lot of options. So I'm going to install the Ubuntu one. So just select the option, then give it a name. Now click on the plus icon and it will start installing the Ubuntu terminal. And once it has finished installing it, we can run the normal commands uh, to install and program and even we can access those programs from the app launcher itself so that is quite convenient so now coming to the android apps uh, first we will need to install it so we will click on the initialize button and we need to authenticate it multiple times so four or five times and finally we will see that uh, we have options to install the aurora store and the fdroid now if we take a look at the android settings we can see that it looks like we had what we have on our smartphones it is running the Android 11 version which isn't the latest but it is what it's stable and uh, all the other settings are quite similar but we do not have any use of it as of yet. So now coming to the Android apps folder we can open up the Aurora store that we have installed. We have three options to log in but it is recommended to use the second one which is the anonymous. Once you log in you can check out all the different applications that we have and they are all categorized based on top charts and categories. So coming to the YouTube applications, so in general Google applications will not work right off the box. We need the macro G to get it work because it requires the Google Play services. But apps like Instagram does work without any issues. You can scroll reel and all that. So it's good to see that it is working. We also have a lot of other applications related to shopping and social media. So just try and see whatever works and what does not. And I also tried a game. So there are not a lot of games in the Aurora store, but I tried this doctor driving and it's also working fine so i think we can just use an android uh, not android but a wireless controller to play the games so just tell me in the comments if you tried any other games and if it's working or not now coming to the default app store which is the linux app store we have a wide variety of applications like the citra one if you are into emulators this is going to be really useful and if you're a coder then we have the visual studio code and we have the audacity if you're into the audio department and shortcut for video editing for online meetings we have the zoom application as well and we can also use the LibreOffice to access the word powerpoint and excel the gaming categories isn't the best it has just some of the retro games but many like to play it so it, there is that but you can use the steam application to access the windows games and play some pc titles 
so by default the application that it comes with are mainly for the advanced users it uh, even the video player does not support the mkv format so you can use the vlc player to play the, those videos other than that we have a music player a file manager and uh, all the basic applications that you need now let's go ahead and see how to install it on your system so first we will visit this official website and if you scroll down you can see we have a lot of different versions like i said before and we have the kde plasma the xfce version or the dpn mate edition so i'm going to go and install the gnome which is one of the most popular and also what i usually download so just click on the fastest link and then download the iso image as i've already downloaded the iso image i'm going to cancel this now we will also download a program called Rufus which is going to help us to create the bootable USB drive. So go ahead and install the latest version and after that open the program and you need a pen drive so 8GB should be fine and we will choose our ISO image. After that we also need to select our partition scheme so to find out about your partition scheme you can right click on the windows start menu then go to the disk management then right click on the disk 0 select properties and under the volume tab you can see your partition scheme for me it is gpt so i'm going to select the gpt partition and after you have done that just select and start the process it's going to format your pen drive so do remember that the process is going to take a long time so once it's done what you need to do is power off your device then press the power menu and the bios key once you're in the bios key you need to disable the secure boot option now again restart and then press the boot menu key and you will see a menu like this. So select your pen drive from the list and once you do that it's going to start booting into the blend OS. It's going to take a couple of minutes. Now we will be in the home screen and we need to connect to the Wi-Fi first before getting started. So now start the process and choose your language layout option. Now create a username and password. Now we have two options, either we can install it on our entire storage replacing the windows or we can create manual partition and dual boot. The dual boot method did not work out for me so I'm going to install it on the entire drive. So this is going to replace the windows and format everything. So make sure everything is correct then just start the process, authenticate it and it will start installing the blend OS on your system. The process is not going to take a long time, uh, it's quite, kind of fast compared to other Linux operating system that I've tried. And once it has finished installing you will see an option to restart and then you can boot up in the blend os and start using it so that was how you can install blend os on your system if you have any questions leave them in the comments and all the links and the guide will be in the description and in the pinned comments so do check that so that was it for this video i hope you like this one and i'll see you in the next one